Hello, hello, welcome to the replay. Today we are talking about how to craft a book title that sells. If you've gone through the pain of writing your book, you want people to read it. So that's what we're talking about today. Alrighty, I'm gonna flip you around and welcome people as we're joining. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. I am still in California, which is why my periscopes are late. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey Miguel, Tracy just popped in the room. Here we go, getting my tripod all up and ready. Hey guys, hey Kenzel, although Kenzel, what's your real name? It's like, I saw your profile when you were on um, Ron Scope. Is it Casey? Let me know how you say your name. Casey? Casey? Let me know. So welcome guys as you're joining. Um, I know Tracy's in here because she's titling her book right now. <laughs> It's raining in Jersey, I'm really sad. We have a slight breeze through our sunny palm trees over here in California. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic, I'm not gonna lie. Sorry about Jersey though. Fall is headed headed our way, isn't it? Alrighty guys, let's dive in. Thanks for the hearts. Okay, yeah, the basics. So if you're new to Periscope, tap hearts and that lets me know that you care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's me know that you're engaged with the content and that what I'm giving you is helpful to you. So thanks for the hearts, guys. Um, if you are not already following me, hit Perry Buddy down there. Change that plus to a check. Trying different versions. Kenzel. Oh, okay. Casey, short for Casey. Okay. Thanks, Kenzel. I appreciate it. If you are watching online, a lot of you people are watching on the web, and that is very cool, but not as cool as watching on the Periscope app, because you can't comment, I don't know you're here, hey Ron, um, you're not in the room with us, we want you in the room with us, we want to interact, I want to know who you are, I want to help you out, and I can only do that if you get off the web and onto your phone app. Really? Yeah. Um, so I usually have like... Oh, sorry, my husband just walked in. Hey, I'm doing a scope. Oh, okay. <laughs> my husband's um, on a conference. You want to say hi? He exists. Sure. I talk about him. Hey. <laughs> uh, my husband's here for a conference, and so I tagged along to be away from the children. <laughs> We're fun people. Oh, yes, they do, Tracy. They match. Um, so I usually have at least 50 people watching on the web. You folks on the web, you need to um, you need to hop in to the party, to the party. It's here in the app. You can do the hearts, you can comment. It's really fun. You can also share. Thank you, Kenzel, for sharing on Twitter. And Miguel shared. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's dive in. Who am I? <laughs> that you should care what I say. I am Morgan Gist McDonald. I'm a writing coach and editor and author. I run my business and blog out of paperravenbooks.com. I take notes for you on these scopes so you don't have to. Go to paperravenbooks.com slash periscope. Um, yes, thank you, Ron. Swipe up or right to share and follow. I need to, I need to like get a groove in about how to share these basics because it's true and so not everyone knows the basics. Okay, so um, yes, paperravenbooks.com slash periscope. You can always catch the notes unless I've been lazy, but they're usually up there within a few hours. <laughs> and uh, oh, thanks for sharing, Tracy. And the replays and transcripts, so you can always stay caught up. All right, so this week we have been talking about um, the more nitty gritty of how to write a book, you know, we've been talking through this vague idea and getting an organization and actually writing the draft. And now, so we've been talking all through how to write the draft. Now it's time to title the thing <laughs> because you've got this great book. It might be anywhere from 20,000 to 70,000 words. Who knows how long your book is, but you, no one's going to read a single word of that unless the title grabs them. And this is, a really painful process for most most authors because it feels like you're Tracy told me just the other day it feels like I'm naming a child <laughs> Miguel says yeah I just read your article on being a pro writer very informative thanks Miguel appreciate that yeah I just sent that out to my list um, earlier today and um, and so Tracy was like I feel like I'm naming my child which is funny because Tracy's also like 36 weeks pregnant with a baby and basically her third trimester with a book <laughs> and so we've got this really funny like mom parallel of like birthing children and naming children and books so there's one sort of like reassurance I want to give you is just like naming a kid like the name's not gonna screw them up forever you know I mean like um, 
they will the book will come to adopt the name that you give it just like a kid grows into the name that you give him you know and and you can't screw up a person just by the name it's not it is it is not going to sink or swim your child or your book so just some reassurance there if the book is good um the the it can grow into the title and tracy says well <laughs> okay true caveat there are terrible titles just like there are terrible names except don't hold on to your book for 20 years but you know what and here's the here's another secret you can rebrand a book why not <laughs> i mean if your aunt if your book's been on amazon and it's a kindle book and it's been on for six months and you're like i just really hate this title take the thing down rename it and upload it again people this is not a big deal anymore <laughs> this is not we're not in the old days yay for indie writing exactly wrong we're not in the old days where you would sign up with the with a publisher and they would print 2500 copies and they might send you 500 copies and they're like sell this thing and you got boxes full of books in your garage and you can't ever change the name like this is something that is we are adaptable now we can take the file down change the name change the cover and re-upload it like this is not a permanent terrible thing okay so just remember that don't put so much pressure on yourself that said a title is important just like a baby name is important and you got to think about it and you got to be careful and you got to be intentional okay so here's some four sort of things for you to consider as you're as you're creating this title number one um, you have a you have a title and you have a subtitle so the title is the place where you can create some intrigue you know something um, that kind of stands out among the crowd and really like calls to your reader and so like the title of my book is start writing your book today so it's um, prescriptive right it it's it's trying to get to my audience who wants to write a book and is ready to stop procrastinating so start writing today um, but there are lots of ways that you can go with the title. You can go with something mysterious. You can go with something edgy. You can go with something that is a little, um, uh, you know, is a little risque even. I mean, who knows? Like, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> you know, it, it's fine. But then use the subtitle to explain because the subtitle, especially if you're going for Amazon, <laughs> she loves science, exactly. Who loves science? It's intriguing. <laughs> um, yes, so that's it. Ron, you are, you're right with me. You can search Amazon for keywords to use in the title. Um, so when you go to Amazon, start putting in keywords that you are considering for the title. Um, specifically for the subtitle because the subtitle is where you can kind of explain what the book is about a bit more so this is great for nonfiction because like Tracy writes um, about science and oh I just realized this Ron Tracy you are both engineers but you both have very different perspectives on engineering which is hilarious because Tracy's like we need more women in engineering and Ron is like I kind of hate engineering and want to be a writer <laughs> <laughs> so it would be really funny to get you guys on a Skype interview together. Um, so Ron uses a program called KDP Spy. Ooh, I have not experimented with that. Okay, I'm I'm writing that down. I'm gonna. You guys are so useful. Okay. Um, hello, hello, Jen. Thanks for joining. You knew, Tracy knew she liked Ron. Ron's a very likable fellow. Okay, so. Go on to Amazon, when you're crafting out your subtitle, go on to Amazon and start typing in keywords, science, parenting, education, and just see what types of books pop up. Oh, thank you, Ron, for sending me a link. Um, when, I was, when I was thinking about my subtitle, just keep me fed. Uh, when I was thinking about my subtitle, I was typing in words like um, writing advice, how to write a book, step by step write a book, you know, and so lots of different combinations. So you want a list, you want to be able to search at least 10 to 12 kinds of words. See what's out there and maybe you'll be inspired and maybe you'll realize that the subtitle you wanted to use is kind of a little bit too close to somebody else's. So you'll just change a few words and it'll be fine. Or maybe. <laughs> Maybe you want to piggyback on someone else's success. I've seen people do that and use a subtitle that's remarkably similar to someone else's. But anyway, so use the, sub, use the title and the subtitle, especially for nonfiction authors. Your title can be intriguing and mysterious. Your subtitle can be more explaining what the book is actually about. In your subtitle, you want to hit your audience. You want to make it really, really clear. 51 shades of gray. <laughs> exactly. You know that's out there somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you want to nail who your audience is in the subtitle. So if you're talking to moms, make sure moms know that it's for them. If you're talking to writers, make sure the writers know it's for them. If you're talking to um, you know educators or if you're talking to Christian missionaries, like make sure that when they read that subtitle, they know it's talking to them. Audience. I'm, um, in the subtitle, you also want to hit the transformation that you're talking about. So a book, regardless of fiction, nonfiction, it's, there's always a transformation that takes place for the reader. Um, that transformation may be a little bit more slippery, loosey-goosey, you know, you might be inspiring them or changing their perspective, or you might be giving them a step-by-step you know, guide, blueprint that's very practical. But either way, you're leading the reader, and through the course of your book, you're leading the reader through a transformative process of some kind. Thanks for the hearts, guys. <laughs> Make sure they know what transformation is going to happen, because that's what the reader wants. They are, think, okay, think about, get in the head of your reader. They're on Amazon, they're on Google, they're putting in word searches because they have a problem in their life, and they know there's a book out there that will help them with this problem. So what is their problem and what kind of solution do they want and what's what's that transformative space between the problem and the solution? So you got to kind of at least hint enough that they will know when I read this book, I will benefit somehow. In KDP, the subtitle you use is supposed to be on the cover as well. Yes, yeah. And so that can be... Um, a little tricky design wise <laughs> to fit in. I think my subtitle is like 20 words long. It's a little bit ridiculous, but there are no rules. Why not? It shows up in the search engine. So yeah, so get in the head of your reader. When your reader is on Google or Amazon or whatever, and they're looking for this solution to their problem, and they know that they're going to undergo some sort of transformation, what transformation do they want? Um, it's not always exactly what happens in the book. So you can you can make this a little bit more marketing friendly. Um, so for instance, you might your subtitle might might um, say I should have thought of more examples before I hopped on that that that's we're live. It's fine. We're going. <laughs> okay. So for instance, there's this book, I don't know if you know Marie Forleo. Um, she is a really big female. <laughs> There's some hearts. Y'all know Marie Forleo. Okay. She's a big like business and lifestyle coach for women entrepreneurs. <laughs> and then there's like one heart. It's like, oh, I know Marie Forleo. Okay. She has a best-selling book that's been um, published in like 11 languages, international bestseller. The book is called, um, how to make any man want you. That might be the subtitle. I'm not sure how to make any man want you. The book is about being confident in who you actually are. So the the title grabs the female audience. You want to date? You want to date yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, show up on Periscope. Yeah, exactly. So you the it attracts the female reader who is looking to be to attract a man. But what they what that female reader really needs is. Um, is more confidence in herself. Okay, so so it, the, there's room to play with this is kind of what I'm getting at is that you, not that you're making promises that you don't live up to, but that you are inside your reader's head and what they are looking for. What they're looking for may be solved in a different way than they anticipate. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so we've got audience, we've got the transformation. And if you can, this is the third thing, specifics. If you can provide any specifics, go for it. Um, for instance, you see a lot, you see this a lot in like the weight loss fitness kind of area, you know, six pack abs in 18 days or whatever, okay? You don't have to do specifics if, um, like Tracy's book is a lot more about sort of parenting perspective and stuff like that. So she's not gonna come out and say, get your daughter into loving science in 30 days or less. Like that's not what the parent's looking for, right? <laughs> But you can imagine me with writers writing a book, I really seriously considered write your book in 90 days or less. There were a lot of other books out there promising similar things, so I didn't go that route. But if you can provide some specifics, whether it's a timeline or number of steps or um, number of ideas, I think I bought a book once, I'm not sure I read it. 
but it's only available in paperback. I remember being really annoyed by that. I had to order this paperback book and it was like 53 ways to promote your um, academic article on social media, something like that, back when I was in academia. So it was really intriguing because it was 53 ways. It wasn't 50 ways and it wasn't 100 ways. It was 53 ways to promote your academic article on social media. And I was like, I didn't even know you could promote an academic article on social media. Why would you do that? <laughs> but the 53 was really intriguing and very specific. And so I was like, hmm, I'll order that. <laughs> so you can you can kind of play with this a little bit. So that, that, those are the major highlights that I would like you to hit. Use your title to um, get some intrigue. Use your subtitle to identify your audience. Um, speak to the transformation that your reader will go through. And provide any specifics if relevant. Because specifics can also be intriguing. Like, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So y'all have any questions? Any thoughts? The software I use to search keywords is at... Um, katiespy.com was it katiepspy? it might be katiepspy.com um, thank you Ron that is awesome yeah and feel free like there's th one of the best strategies is to just go oh no it's kdspy K okay I'm sorry katiespy.com I'll put that in the notes too um, to search on Amazon why not um, you should spend at least 20 or 30 minutes kind of just going through and looking at titles. And then, when also when you're getting your cover design, what you might want to do is pull up the categories that you want to rank highly in and look at the types of book covers that are popping up in those categories and make sure that your book cover will stand out. That's kind of a different issue, but um, more of a design, a design thing. But you want your title and your colors to stand out in relation to the other covers that are showing up on Amazon. I did, this, we're veering off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so I did my title, my cover design through 99designs.com. And on that service, you post like a job and then all of these designers just like post tons and tons of designs and you get to pick your favorite. So they would post screenshots of the designs they were working on and I would vote, like give them a star rating one through five or whatever and provide feedback. Well, one of, actually maybe more than one, a couple of them had this really great idea where they took, so they gave me the full image of the cover they were designing, and then they took a thumbnail version of it, like the exact same thumbnail size that Amazon uses, and they took a screenshot of the Amazon page where I wanted the category that I wanted to rank in, and they put their little thumbnail cover in the screenshot so that I would literally be able to see how my book stacked up to Jeff Gowen's book and you know like all the other creative self-help category people um, which was really cool so then I could see okay well this cover really stands out in relation to the big hits that are there now so that was a neat little idea more cover design than title but it also helps you to see how the like the importance of the title design that the words are readable, that your title is, you want your title, this is actually another good point, you want your main title to be f fewer words so that you can make the words bigger because it's gonna be on an Amazon thumbnail. So you want large letters. So if your title is 20 words long, you can't have large letters. You want your actual main title to be more like four to eight words probably so they can be big and then your subtitle, subtitle can be longer and they'll just be small words, but that's okay. You want the big words to grab them so they click on the Amazon link and then they'll see the subtitle. That's the point. So what do you guys think? Who else is titling a book? I know Tracy's titling a book. Miguel, Ron, Kenzel. Are y'all titling books right now? If they want to throw out a title, we could talk about a title. That would be kind of fun. Always, Ron's always titling a book. <laughs> um, that would be an interesting thing. I have to say, I'm, I'm intrigued by Blab because Blab is a lot like Periscope, but you can have four people talking at the same time. And it would be cool to do like coaching on Blab, like get two or three clients or whatever, or interested clients and say, okay guys, let's talk about your titles. And then we like workshop through the titles. I know there there are I have not jumped on blab yet but people keep talking about it and it is interesting I'm thinking about it alrighty guys Josh Walker the birth of an agent ooh that is intriguing that does sound good I do want to 
Um, Kinsel hasn't used it yet, and Ron checked it out. Um, what kind of agent? A double agent? A CIA agent? A I, w I would get just a little more specific. Or do you want to leave the agent mysterious and intriguing? FBI, I'm assuming. It was probably didn't autocorrect for you. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to think about that a little more. <laughs> literary agent. <laughs> Birth of the literary FBI agent. <laughs> FBI literary agent. I'm gonna th I am gonna. want to think about that a little bit more, Miguel. I might get you some feedback and see. <laughs> Josh Walker, Birth of an Agent. I'm literally writing that down. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. I want to read that book, Miguel. You should finish it so I can read it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go enjoy some time at the beach because I can. <laughs> I'll do some editing on the beach, I think. You guys have a good afternoon. I might scope a little bit later. I think I tried to scope from the beach last night, but I think the signal was kind of bad. So we'll see. I might come back here and do another scope. But thanks, guys, for hanging out. Scope notes, paperravenbooks.com slash periscope. Catch the notes and the replays and the transcripts. Yes, and thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for all the hearts. Thanks for all the comments. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Bye.